Hello and welcome to Press TV's debate. I'm Marcia Hashimi. Thanks so much for being with us. The United Arab Emirates and Israel have normalized ties with each other. Palestinian resistant groups consider this move as a stab in the back by their Arab brethren. Now the move seems to be another attempt by Washington to appease Tel Aviv and also for the Trump administration to help try to get the U.S. president re-elected. But from reactions from around the world, what is obvious is that this move will not be without major repercussions for all parties involved. It seems that yet another Arab country has abandoned its roots as the Persian Gulf nation of the United Arab Emirates has signed a so-called peace deal with the Israeli regime following multiple secret negotiations, apparently brokered by Donald Trump. Trump claimed that the deal was a major diplomatic agreement and that the accord would mean any annexation of the West Bank would be delayed but not cancelled. According to Trump, the deal is just the start of more to come, as he expects that there will be similar agreements in the future between the Israeli regime and other Arab states. Trump stated that this was the icebreaker of deals, potentially hinting that others are in progress already. The two participants of the deal were also full of praise for the agreement, with the Crown Prince of the United Arab Emirates, Mohammed bin Zayed, stating that the deal was struck with the Israeli regime in order to stop the annexation of the West Bank, although the regime has claimed that this is only a temporary solution. The Israeli regime also released a brief statement from the president with Reuven Rivlin claiming that the deal meant a new era for ties with Arab nations. However, could this be nothing more than a political cloak for both Trump and Netanyahu, both of whom are in direly tight political straits, with Trump on the verge of a political defeat in the upcoming elections, and Netanyahu being tried for corruption. With this deal being nothing more than a clear diversion from problems away from home, with Trump in particular promising deals with the likes of Iran within 30 days should he be re-elected, which if true, means any such deal could be completed at any time. But he's clearly using it for political gain. Whereas Trump and Netanyahu are trying every last desperate measure to gain some kind of credibility before their imminent downfall, the likes of Iran, Turkey and Palestine have seen right through the deal, exposing the flaws and the clear injustice towards Palestine. Turkey and Iran's denouncement of the deal both cover the notion of the stab in the back for the people of Palestine, as well as strong opposition of the ongoing annexation of the West Bank and the chokehold on the Gaza Strip. The UAE has made a huge and wrong decision. We hope that they realize their mistake and abandon it, and realize that this is a wrong path. It's neither in the interest of their government nor their country. The Turkish Foreign Ministry has also condoned the deal in similar terms to the Iranians, stating that the region will never forgive and forget the treachery served up by the UAE against the Palestinian cause. The Palestinians have also issued a statement with PLO executive Hanan Ashrawi highlighting atrocious acts by the Israeli regime on the Palestinian people, as well as highlighting the notion of being sold out by their so-called friends. It seems that for the Israeli regime, the ongoing pressure placed on the people of Palestine appears to have been rewarded by the people of another Arab nation, as the occupying forces of the regime reap the benefit of their crimes, and for now, enjoy another moment of suppression over the Palestinians. I'd like to welcome my guest to the program, former Bahraini MP and Middle East expert, Dr. Jalal Farooz, uh, out of London, author and Middle East uh, affairs expert, Dr. Saab Shaf, out of Belfast. Thank you both uh, for being with us. Let's start it off uh, in London. Um, what do you make about this whole normalization of ties by the UAE and Israel? Well, uh it's actually uh, the, the, the ties were normalized, but it was under the table for so, so many decades there has been uh, uh, relations between the UAE and the uh, regime uh, which is occupying Palestine. And uh, we, we know that uh, all uh, reports have, have, have cru crucially stated that Mohammed bin Zayed has funded the uh, election campaign of uh, the criminal Netanyahu, and uh, uh, there were several uh, uh, regime uh, of, of, of Israel 
uh, uh, officials who have visited UAE, including uh, Minister of uh, Works uh, and Social Affairs uh, uh, of the, of the uh, occupying uh, regime of Israel to, to UAE just uh, a, a year ago. And uh, there, there has been uh, all sorts of <clears throat> uh, uh, efforts to try to uh, make the public opinion of the UAE, UAE people ready for this. And it is a, a, a very uh, filthy lie that this will be uh, in a, a deal as against the annexation of the West Bank. The West Bank ha has been annexed, and actually, who have participated in this was the UAE, who had its representative attending the ceremony of opening the American embassy in, in Jerusalem just uh, a year and a half ago. And uh, all this is, is, is nothing new. Uh, of course, uh, next will be uh, Bahrain, and we will see uh, Saudi Arabia right after that. Well, turning to Belfast, uh, Saab, why do you think the UAE has agreed to normalize ties with Israel openly at this moment? Uh, to start with, uh, there is no real sovereignty uh, of uh, uh, this Mohammed bin Zayed or the sheikhs over the United Arab Emirates. It's controlled by multinational companies uh, since the British were withdrawn from it in 1970. And they uh, uh, kept uh, these tribes, uh, tribal re leaders, under tight control of these multinationals. So at the end of the day, uh, it's still to me they are a colony. And we've seen them uh, being used in the, uh, in the waves uh, of attacks came uh, against Iraq in 2003. The Americans used them uh, as well. And the Israelis, uh, as uh, your guest was uh, alluding the uh, uh, they they use the United Arab Emirates to spy uh, on Iran, and they been this un the, the the cooperation uh, uh, under the table, and uh, it's, it becomes is very hard for the Israelis now since the official visits of uh, Israeli ministers and sports teams, and these exchange uh, exchanges between the Emirates and Israel, uh, they couldn't hide it anymore. And there is a, a crucial point in the war in 2014, war of the Zionist entity on the Gaza Strip. The Emirates sent a team of 50 doctors from the Red Cross of the United Arab Emirates. The Palestinian resistance stated that day, uh, these 50 doctors are Zionist spies collecting information. Uh, uh, about the Palestinian resistance position. And they're supposed to be uh, an assistant from the United Arab Emirates, and they deported them at the time. This is one of the first things to be uh, uh, discovered at, at the time. Recently, the United Arab Emirates uh, exchanging a lot of uh, uh, trade or security uh, deals and wheeling with the Zionist entity and sent its airplanes to Ben Gurion Airport, landing there under the cover and the camouflage, they were providing medical support for the Palestinians to overcome the Corona pandemic. When the Palestinians refused to receive that, and they told them, "You are betraying us," and we said to you, "We are rejecting to receive anything coming through the Zionist entity airports and that." This is normalizing of relationship mm -hmm. between the Emirates and the Zionist entity, and it's still okay. this in the planes. All of that to to, uh, uh, to cover up what the loads uh, the, the the Emirates are bringing from uh, Tel Aviv. Okay, stay to stay with me, Saab. Stay with me. Let me cross back over to Jalal. Uh, now, Jalal, you alluded to possibly other. Uh, Arab regimes following suit. So I want to expand on that. Which ones do you think and why? Again, the question is, why now in your perspective? Well, uh, it's, it's very obvious that Bahrain will be next uh, probably in, in, in few weeks, really. We, 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 we will hear that. Uh, <coughs> of course, uh, it, was, it was just a few months ago that uh, on Press TV, I, I stated that soon we will have the flags of the occupying regime of Israel uh, uh, just flying over the capitals of, of the Persian Gulf states. Uh, uh, the Bahrain has been uh, put as uh, a front goat 
for uh, the, the Trinity of uh, Bahrain, uh, UAE, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, and Bahrain has been promoting very much as uh, that, that normally uh, normalizing relations with Israel is, 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 is not a big deal. Uh, he actually, uh, several times, the foreign affairs minister of Bahrain has said that our uh, enemy in, uh, uh, as Arabs uh, is not Israel, it is Iran. Uh, actually, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the king of Bahrain have uh, had good relation with, with uh, the prime ministers of the, the regime of Israel. And uh, just a few years ago, he, sh uh, he shook hand with the prime minister of Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could see uh, all sorts of, of uh, interrelations. Uh, uh, last year, two of the uh, so-called workshops for the deal of the century were uh, organized in Bahrain. And believe it or not, uh, the organizers, the security of, of the hotel and surroundings were given to Mossad security forces, mm -hmm. imagine, in Bahrain. And of, uh, uh, of course, you, you, you could find all sorts of high officials, Israelis, visiting Bahrain. So it's, okay. it's, 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 it's going to happen soon. Okay. Well, Saab, how likely are we to see more Arabs uh, rising up against their regimes? Because as Jalal has just alluded to, he thinks that there are going to be other Arab regimes uh, following suit of the United Arab Emirates. But what we do know uh, is that the majority of Arab people do not support the normalizations of ties uh, with Israel. So tell me about that. Do you, do you see that there's going to be blowback for these regimes from their own people, or how do you assess it? I'll give you an example. The United Arab Emirates itself, it's have a population of one million, uh, supposed to be Emiratis, with most of them nationalized uh, uh, from different ethnicity. They are from different countries and hold the citizenship. And nine million workers. Uh, so the, the, the real population in the United Arab Emirates, they know if they rise against the regime, what they're going to face. Second, there is two, two stages or two phases happen in here. The Arab Peace Initiative, which was formulated in 2002 during the Arab Summit and offered a peace with Israel, uh, condition of the two-state solution, East Jerusalem is the capital of the Palestinians, and the right of the Palestinian refugees to return home uh, uh, or to be compensated. This is, was the religious, uh, if you want, uh, uh, position of the Arab nations, which the United Arab Emirates have broke, break away from. Why, since 2011, uh, and the Arab, supposed to be Arab Spring, the Arab Sting, uh, and they, was, with the help of NATO and the United States of America and Israel, formulated a lot of takfiri groups to destabilize the region, uh, from Syria to Libya to the war in Yemen to Iraq to even uh, Egypt and all of that. Uh, then the, the position is changed. They created a new enemy in the Arabic psyche, and their media mouthpiece were uh, saying it day in and day out, as your uh, guests were saying. They wanted to create now a coalition to destabilize any state in the region that stands against Israel or uh, and bring them together and unite the new regimes together against Iran. So the, the Israel and the United States of America uh, imperial project reigns supreme in the region. This is target. Well, Jala, do you think that on some levels the actual normalization of ties with Tel Aviv by, for example, UAE or other uh, uh, of these Arab regimes will more rapidly expose the overall hypocrisy um, of these uh, Arab rulers? Well, uh, it's, 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 it's gone beyond that, really. They don't have anything to hide anymore. All the masks have, have been falling down. Uh, they, 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 they supported Israel. You know, imagine in the United, uh, 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 United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, just a few months ago, uh, there were votes to, with the, to, to, to make Israel as <clears throat> the, the president of, of the legal committee, co uh, committee 
And imagine UAE, Saudi Arabia, and, and, and lots of other Arab states have voted yes for that. Uh, they, they, even during the, 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 the 2007 and, uh, and 2014 wars against the Palestinians in Gaza, the Palestinians themselves said that UAE were uh, working against the Palestinians. Uh, uh, the, the thing is that currently the new uh, order of this world uh, is being much more influenced by the NATO headed by uh, United States and Western governments. And uh, the, the, the Arab regime are being uh, following them. Uh, it's, it's mainly what happened today is mainly instructions from Trump. Well, but and, but uh, Jalal, sorry to jump in here. I mean, what about the people themselves who live in these countries? Do you think that they are just following suit, um, like their Arab regimes, or do you think that there may be some reaction? Are, are you saying basically that the U.S. and Israel have been so effective with their propaganda that uh, my, many of the Arab peoples are actually buying into this situation? The public opinion of the Arabs and, uh, is, 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 is probably 99% is against normalizing relations with, with the Zionists. Uh, and they, but but they, they are uh, undermined, they are very oppressed. Uh, imagine if anyone dares to, to protest in UAE uh, against uh, this decision from uh, Mohammed bin Zayed then they, they will be abducted, they will be tried, they will be put behind bars. Right. Uh, imagine, uh, of course, there, there were, uh, even today, we've, we've seen several of the uh, UAE elites and some of the UAE uh, university professors have, have said that it's, it's a shame uh, and they don't follow that. But, uh, I think even with these will be will be taken uh, uh, into custody, okay. uh, or they, they will be under pressure. So, uh, fear, so fear is playing a role in absolutely. all of this. Okay. Well, Saab, I, I mean, while the resistance in the Arab world, like Hezbollah, is about to commemorate its victory over Israel during the 33-day war 14 years ago, and the UAE decides to recognize an entity that has stolen the land of Arabs, displaced millions of Palestinians, and killed and wounded so many. So, what can be learned from these two sides? These these two models, the one side which states uh, that resistance is the only way to deal with this regime, are the one that believes in ignoring Israeli oppression and giving in to its pressure. Myself, I really appreciate that the United Arab Emirates coming to the open and show its real colors, because we are sick to teeth in the Arab world from traitors uh, 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 betraying themselves as brothers or friends. And they are foes, actually. This is what the United Arab Emirates. So pluralization in the Arab street is very clear. Who are the enemy and who is the friend? Uh, this is needed to, uh, the people need to see that. Need to see who's really their brothers in there and who's really stand with, shoulder to shoulder with the enemy. To me, this is, is not negative when we, the Emirates, expose its real intention. And tomorrow, the Saudis and the Bahraini as well, as my friends alluded, this is, this is a clear. The resistance camp is winning in the Arabic world. In the streets of Beirut or Gaza and Damascus, in Sana'a they are winning. And in, in Manama they are winning in the future. So uh, this, this situation of these co uh, countries like Emirates and uh, the Saudi Arabia, they are ty tyrannical countries. Uh, you cannot even use uh, proper social media in the United Arab Emirates. And they uh, groom them in the West like they are uh, democratic countries. You cannot use a voice over IP in, in, in the United Arab Emirates or in Saudi Arabia. You cannot, you cannot use so many things. You are uh, suffocating the people. They are, that's because they are, they are afraid. In Syria, while Syria was fighting terrorism from 2011 till today, they never respected YouTube or social media. That shows how much is the government and the resistance are comfortable with its own people uh, in the war against the enemy. So it's right to, to show their real faces today. Okay.
Well, um, uh, Jalal, we're starting to see Muslim countries, which are against having these ties with Israel, decrying the move. Are we likely to see a growing number of Muslim nations, at least, united against this normalization process and the possible effect, if that's the case? Uh, actually, I, I doubt that, because uh, mainly the, the, the American Zionist uh, international system have uh, done a very hard work since decades to to uh, instate uh, the the puppets on on the arab and islamic uh, states you rarely would see probably uh, if you exclude malaysia tunisia probably uh, uh, turkey uh, then the the rest uh, you 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 could see of course uh, in, in the line of the American Zionism uh, way, and 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 that's that's uh, which 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 will enforce them, and they they were put under pressure. You see, uh, uh, the 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 Egyptians 42 years ago normalized relations with with, with Israel, in in a, in a hope that they will gain economic uh, 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 good good being well being. But uh, now you could see that Egypt is much under debt and much under economic pressure, right. much more than 42 years. Okay, also, stay Jordan with me, Jalal. Stay with me. I'm sorry, we're, we're running out of time. I want to get Saab back in on this. Saab, do you think that we will witness more upheaval in the region and less safety for the Israeli regime and other regimes which support it or not? Yes, of course we're going to see that. The United States of America's project uh, is not winning at all. The resistance, if you look at the resistance from the year 2000 till today, it's 20 years, it's achieved a lot. In Gaza in 2005, the Palestinians in Gaza, they kicked the Israeli army and its colonial settlers out of the Gaza Strip. Of course, they imposed siege, even assisted by some Arabs on them. But in real terms, the Palestinians liberated the Gaza Strip even if it's besieged and blockaded. In Yemen today, the, the people of Yemen is standing against the domination of Saudis and American and there, and they manufacturing their own precise weapons against them. In Syria, they are kicking the takfiris and they fighting the Americans and all the other Zionist uh, forces in there. In Lebanon, Israel won't dare even to infiltrate the south of Lebanon. Uh, so the Arab masses take it from Algeria uh, to Sana'a. They are aware of what's going on. And one day you will see these tyrants will pay the price for what they're doing. And on that note, I'd like to thank both my guests for being with me on this debate. A former Bahraini MP and Middle East expert, Dr. Jalal Fayrouz, out of London, and author and Middle East affairs expert, Dr. Saeb Shath, out of Belfast. And as always, viewers, we appreciate you being with us on another debate. I'm Marzia Hashimi, signing off for myself and all the crew right here in Tehran. Hope to see you right here, same place, next time.